Welcome back to the shop, friends. This is part three in how to build a treadle lathe. In the last episode, we laid out the ways, the horizontal pieces of the lathe that hold the uprights together. I've gotten started without you and cut the joinery on the first, and today we're going to cut the joinery on the uh, second way. So cutting the tenons on the way is not much different than actually um, cutting the, uh, the way to length. I still uh, take my marking knife and I mark all the lines and then I take my chisel and I uh, create a knife wall. Cutting the knife wall around the shoulder of the tenon really helps to uh, keep the uh, shoulder square and also keeps a nice square line there, uh, a nice crisp line there uh, and it'll look really good in the final in the final joinery. Once I get the knife wall created around the uh, the entire shoulder of the tenon, then I'll go ahead and get my saw and start to make the cuts. So I've got the shoulders cut around the entire tenon. Um, I've cut them to the approximate depth um, that the tenon will be. Um, each tenon in this project is going to be one inches just for simplicity. Um, there's multiple ways that you can cut a tenon with hand tools and power tools as well. This particular project, uh, the grain, is quite um, difficult to work with. So. I'm actually going to cut this one using the saw, my hand saw, my Japanese saw. Um, and in a separate video, I'm going to I'm going to describe how different ways that you can cut tenons with hand saws. Okay, we've got the edge uh, cheeks cut on this particular tenon on both sides, and now we're going to cut the face um, cheeks. <laughs> Thank you. 
we've got the bulk of the material removed from the tenon. So now we'll take our chisel and our plane and clean that up some. got the tenon pretty well cleaned up. It's fairly uh, square um, and uh, of the approximate size that I want it. When it's, uh, when it's time for assembly, I'll fine tune the tenon as needed. I may need to shave down a little bit on the edges or on the, the, uh, the cheeks of the tenon. And I also may need to clean up the shoulders a little bit more. But I want to put a decorative uh, rounded edge on the end of the tenon, so we'll do that now. So I've found for this tenon that this uh, scotch uh, spray adhesive that I had in the shop makes a nice rounded edge for this size tenon. So I'm just going to use that to, to mark the, uh, the outline of the, uh, the rounded uh, tenon. And now I'm going to take my handsaw and go ahead and take out the bulk of that waste. the uh, edges roughed out with my uh, saw and now I'm just going to take my sharp chisel and I'm going to round over those corners. You probably notice I have a, a chopping block underneath the uh, tenon to keep from getting tear out on those unsupported fibers on the bottom side of the tenon. take the same chisel and just clean up uh, clean up the uh, rounded uh, edges of the tenon a little bit more. I'm being very cautious not to uh, cut along those unsupported fibers which would cause tear out. I can take my bench plane and just clean that up a little bit more. In the final part of the tenon, I like to take my uh, bench plane and just uh, bevel the edges a little bit. You can also do this with a chisel as well, but a sharp uh, bench plane works really well.
Okay, we've got the tenon pretty much finished out. Um, it will require some fine tuning. Okay, we got one more joint to cut today and we're gonna cut this housing dado that's on the uh, way as well. As you remember, it's uh, set off the uh, shoulder of the tenon uh, six inches and it is uh, measured as the thickness of the upright. So here it is all laid out in the vise. Uh, no secrets here, I established a, a knife line using my marking knife and then I went ahead and uh, created a knife wall using my chisel. made my cuts along the knife walls on each side of the housing dado and then I went ahead and made a series of relief cuts in the middle down to my marking line and that'll help when I'm chiseling out the waist. You can see my marking line is right there that I made with my marking gauge and I brought my relief cuts right above that and then I'll clean it up with the chisel. I've been using my inch and a half timber framing chisel for much of this project as the uh, material is big and the uh, joints are large and it makes pretty quick work of it with a sharp chisel. didn't chisel out the waist all the way through. I turned the board around. Now I'm going to chisel this side out this direction. I don't want to get tear out on the edge of the board. the same process when you're when you're removing the uh, or fine-tuning the uh, the bottom of the joint you don't want to uh, work your chisel off the edge because you will get tear out due to the unsupported fibers there so I turned the board around and now I'm chiseling into the middle of the board and now I'm just fine-tuning the depth of the housing and I'm using those relief cuts that I made as a guide and it makes it a lot easier. Well friends, it feels good to get some joinery completed. We've got the two ways complete. And uh, on the next video, we'll start working on the uprights. 
I hope you're enjoying this project. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out my prior videos and the two prior episodes in the Treadle Lays series. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Give a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next video.